Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cruise in Review podcast. I'm Blake. And I'm Audrey. It is so good to have you with us for our first ever episode of the Cruise in Review podcast. We told you it was coming, and now it's finally here. Yes, I'm so excited to get to share more information about all the things about our cruise and some news. It's going to be a lot of fun, so I hope you keep watching. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Norris Frog is here. Yeah. He is the uh, producer of the show. You might have seen uh, some of his escapades uh, in uh, San Juan at uh, Senior Frog, which is home to his cousin. Um, so he went and visited some family while he was down there. But he's the producer of our show, so he keeps us on time and uh, just lurks creepily in the background. So that's what he's good at. That's mm -hmm. it. We keep everybody to their own skill set here at Cruise and Review. So let's talk a little about what we're going to do on the podcast. So uh, we're going to, first of all, our first probably seven or eight episodes are going to run down our most recent cruise, which was our seven-night Southern Caribbean cruise on board Voyager of the Seas. Yes, and it was a great time, and we're so excited to get to share a little bit more information about each port, each what shore excursions we did. So you want to make sure you, you know, you're watching this episode, but come back because it's going to be a lot of fun that over the next couple of weeks as we share all that. Yeah, and there's going to be video. It's not just going to be us sitting here talking with Norse Frog staring at you. <laughs> there's going to be video. We have a lot of video coming through. Uh, we're going to, so, um, you know, and we're going to share a lot of our video from that trip and then some of our guidance, uh, about things that we did and, and just mm -hmm. discuss that. We're also going to have some news, uh, about once an episode, we'll run you through kind of our news of the week. And then we will also, uh, give you a cruise of the week. And then yeah. uh, if you'll stay tuned to the very end, we've got a little bit of a giveaway that we're doing, uh, for our subscribers to that. So lots coming your way on that. Now on this episode, as we promised, we are going to run you through our most recent cruise, which was a seven-night Southern Caribbean cruise a few mm -hmm. weeks ago on board Voyager of the Seas out of San Juan. Now, uh, we're not going to start in San Juan. We're going to move that to the very back because we did a lot of content from San Juan uh, that you can actually see on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're going to start actually on boarding day, which was about the time we realized we had no internet connection. <laughs> um, we had internet connection. It just wasn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then... Um, we will move from boarding day on through, and then we'll probably recap San Juan at the end, just so we don't hit you with like the same stuff we hit you with like three weeks ago. Yeah, I think that sounds great. It, I'm excited to really share about um, all the things about the ship, kind of how how all that process worked in San Juan, um, and because we've had a lot of people say we want to do that exact cruise that you guys did, and so I'm excited to get to share a little bit more insight. So in case you decide to book that same exact cruise, you're going to be well prepared. You're going to know what to expect. You know, know where to go, all the fun things. And if you want to pick this up, you can actually uh, listen to this uh, anywhere that you uh, can get your podcast. So Apple, Spotify, Amazon, anything like that, you can actually get that there too. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you don't finish it, you can listen to it um, on your way to work or on your way home or uh, while you're exercising or whatever. So let's get started with some news of the week. And it was a busy news week in the cruise industry. First of all, a couple of uh, private Port of Call destinations announced uh, Disney and Royal Caribbean both announcing some private uh, Royals was not really a private port of call, but Disney's is a full-on private port of call. Uh, it's going to be called Lighthouse Point. It's opening in summer of 2024. It's going to be located in Eleuthera in the Bahamas. It will actually be Disney's second private destination. Uh, that's second to Castaway Cay. That, and that's incredible because for me, it doesn't matter what cruise line you go on, the private destinations are my favorite. Your drink package is usually good on the island if they offer that. They bring food out on the island, and you get to enjoy a really pretty beach. I mean... So that's exciting for Disney, for sure. Again, opening in summer 2024, Royal Caribbean announced the opening of the Royal Beach Club in 2025. It's going to be located mm -hmm. on Paradise Island in Nassau. If you don't know where that's at, Paradise Island is where Atlantis is located. It's actually going to be west of Atlantis, right there near the port. You can see some images of that here. Um, it's an exclusive deal to Royal Caribbean. It's not a private destination. They'll still dock into Nassau. It'll be an excursion port. It was a deal between the Bahamian government and the Royal Caribbean Group. Uh, the Bahamian government will actually have 49% uh, stake in the profits from uh, that deal. And uh, so, again, exciting news for Royal Caribbean. Nassau really has been a disappointing port of call to a lot of people mm -hmm. the last probably five to ten years or so. And so maybe that'll get things going in the right direction. Yeah, and they're going to add things like pools and bars. And I think that some of those the over-the-water cabanas, um, so it's a really neat feature for Royal Caribbean to offer. And like Blake said, hopefully make that Nassau port of call just a little better. I mean, unless you go to Atlantis um, when you're in Nassau, it, it's, uh, it is a little disappointing. So I'm excited to see Royal Caribbean taking that next step forward to hopefully make that one of their um, number one or more popular ports of call. 
And last but not least, uh, how about the burrowing owl, burrowing, <laughs> burrowing yeah. owl, that went for a two-week vacation on board Symphony of the Seas. Uh, so it was spotted over a couple of weeks on the ship by guest. It was mm-hmm. reported to uh, the ship's authorities. They never could find it. Finally, they kind of located it. It was actually in Central Park. If you've ever been on an Oasis-class ship, Central Park is in the middle of the ship. It's an open-air area that has trees, bars, restaurants. But it's got a lot of uh, natural green mm-hmm. space. So this owl was living in there. Yeah. Um, so Florida Fish and Wildlife brought biologists on board to actually help capture the owl, as well as uh, the environmental team on board Symphony of the Seas. It was safely captured. They had one hour to capture the owl yeah. because they were in Port uh, Everglades. So they it comes on board. You know, they uh, the, the the guests get off. Now they're trying to capture it before there's guests running all over the place. So the, they get the owl, capture it, and get mm-hmm. it off. In one hour, mm-hmm. they were able to get it. And it was quite the show trying to get it off. It at one point was on an exit sign, and it flipped to a 10th floor balcony, and they scared it off of there, and it went into a tree. And then they were able to capture the owl very safely. The owl was rehomed Which is, from the ship. You know, if you've ever seen one of those Oasis-class ships, thinking about trying to capture an owl in an hour on a ship that's as big as the Oasis class ship, that's pretty impressive, I would say. Yeah. So, it, you know, that owl lived its best life for two weeks. <laughs> you know, I, ironically, uh, there's been a couple of times that uh, they've had to do that with me getting off the ship where they were chasing me all over the place and I didn't want to leave. So I, I feel the owl's pain. <sighs> At least they didn't drop me off in the middle of the Everglades and uh, send me off for the best. So. That's our news of the week. You can see more news, uh, of course, on cruiseinreview.com. All right, let's move on to our topic of the day, which is uh, boarding day. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a generic boarding day uh, discussion, not uh, completely um, just our trip to San Juan. We'll tell you how that went, uh, boarding Voyager of the season San Juan, but we're going to also give you some boarding day tips and tricks um, as we you know, kind of navigate through this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, boarding day can be stressful if you're a, a new cruiser and you really don't know what you're doing. There's a handful of things you can do to make it easier, and we've learned these over the years. Yeah, over you know little tips and tricks we've been we've read from other blogs that we follow. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know when you pull up to the port, if you don't really know what's going on, if there's a million people running a hundred different directions when you get to that port, yeah. and so definitely the tips and the tricks have helped along the way. And I know Blake's going to go into details on some of those um, along the podcast. So, uh, first of all, if you're, most cruise lines have gone to this now, it's boarding times. So, you will get, when you check in online, and if you want an earlier one, check in earlier, mm-hmm. uh, as soon as you can. That's normally 90 to 60 days out from your cruise. Um, check in earlier. Um, if you don't really care, doesn't really matter. Um, but they'll range anywhere from normally about 11 to 11.30 a.m. Uh, these are all local time, to about an hour and a half before the ship actually set sail. So um, the sh- you got to be on board the ship 90 minutes before the ship set sail, so that way they can file their proper paperwork mm-hmm. with the local authorities. Um, but they have boarding times. We didn't really check in until probably about two weeks before the cruise. There weren't very many boarding times available, which was fine with us because in San Juan, um, you know, you there's so much to do there. There's so, It's such a beautiful place. It's not like sailing out of a port of call where it's just you're just there to get on the cruise so we weren't all that worried about it so we actually ended up with a 4 30 boarding time yeah i mean san juan is a destination in its own some cruise ships actually visit san juan as a port of call so we wanted to make sure we you know used all of our time in san juan and you know we were definitely excited about getting on the ship but we wanted to make sure we got to do everything we wanted to do in san juan yeah now more on that later we didn't exactly follow the boarding time but um (laughs) and we'll, we'll talk more about that later uh, and, uh, but first of all, each port's different. Each port has its own mm-hmm. set. So you can go to a good example is Port Everglades down in Fort Lauderdale or maybe Miami. Galveston has a new cruise terminal as well, which we will be showing to you uh, about a month from now. Mm-hmm. We'll be showing you the new Galveston terminal uh, as we board Allure of the Seas. But um, the newer, nicer, specific terminals to the cruise lines, uh, a lot of them have them now, m- may have more facilities. They may have better organization. Mm -hmm. Um, So all boarding day experiences are not created equal. Uh, San Juan is really is a port of call. Now it's gotten better over the years, but Mm -hmm. uh, the actual terminal there, it's located right by a kind of executive airport. There's not a lot of room for taxis. There's like one road in and one road out. There's normally a couple of ships docked there. Um, 
that that they're both trying to load and the roads run together, traffic can be a nightmare. We didn't personally experience that on this cruise, yeah. but we have on previous cruises that about two o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. it can get really tough down there. So just prepare yourself out of San Juan because mm -hmm. um, it's not got the facilities of a Port Everglades, Port Miami, uh, Galveston, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Especially if you fly in day of, if you're one of those people that, you know, decides to fly in day of the cruise. Now, we don't recommend that in San Juan, and you'll learn, you know, I hope you follow the content we posted, and you'll learn a little later. But, you know, you, you need to allow for that traffic, allow to get on the ship, you know, because it is a one-in, one in, one way out. Sometimes there's more than one cruise ship. You never know. Yeah, you can get to Port Everglades, and there be, you know, seven to mm -hmm. ten cruise ships there at one time. But those bigger ports are a little bit more equipped to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, San Juan is a little smaller. However, we had a very smooth boarding process. So yeah. we told you our boarding time was at 4.30. We decided that um, we would keep our wristbands on from the uh, hotel. We would get our stuff, and we would go to the port. And we thought, you know, push comes to shove. Mm -hmm. If they are enforcing these times, um, we could always just drop our luggage off, get rid of our big bags that mm -hmm. we had checked. Uh, and then we could go back to the hotel and go swimming and then dry off and come back at our assigned boarding time. We mm -hmm. also thought, given some recent experiences, we might just simply, they might just let us on board. Uh, we are diamond members with the cruise line. A lot of times that may buy you a little clout and they just let you through. We weren't trying to cheat this. Well, we were trying to cheat the system. What am I kidding? But, you know, you, you can try that. And I thought if they turn us away, we won't put up an argument. You know, we're here ahead of our assigned time. So we might just... Um, get on board earlier. And if not, we'll just say, oh, we'll get back in a taxi and we'll head back. You know, there's a million taxis that are dropping people off. We'll yeah. go back to the hotel till you know, four o'clock or so and come back. But so we headed down to the port. Uh, we, and it was early. It was about 11, 15, 11, 30. There was no traffic at the time. Um, cause I'm assuming the boarding times probably started around noon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would think the same thing too. And like you yeah. said, there, there were some people there when we got there, but there wasn't just a ton of people. Yeah. So that worked out for us for sure. And it, it, especially dropping off those bags and whatnot. So, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the chance to see what the one and two and three o'clock time slots mm -hmm. looked like. Um, but you know, it all worked out. Yeah. And departure time in San Juan's later. So uh, it could be between seven and 10 o'clock. We've left at 10. Mm -hmm. we, we left this time at 8 30. So you've got more time to board than normal. Normally it's at five o'clock. So your boarding time is probably going to be between 11 and 2 30. But on this cruise, they got deeper and deeper. I and mean, there were some up to six o'clock at night. So, mm -hmm. um, and there were people getting on until about six o'clock at night. Um, if that's what you want to do, some of them flew in same day. And that's one of the reasons they do that. It's not as far to the next island. And then, um, you know, also you you giving people time to fly in because um, some of the flights won't land until three. Mm -hmm. uh, but so we get there, no lines because I think we beat most of that. I think the cruise lines probably had boarding time starting at noon. There, Norwegian Epic was in there mm -hmm. as well. They didn't have a lot of people at their port. So we drove straight in, taxi dropped us off. And what you'll do, you'll be met by a porter typically right at the curb. They'll come up. Um if you're a first-time cruiser, you might not know what's going on because they're not with the cruise line. Um, they will typically be wearing a lanyard, some sort of identification, but they're not with, they don't have on a Royal Caribbean shirt or a Carnival yeah. shirt. They're porters. And these people are legitimate. They're going to help you with your bags. And um, and they are expecting a little tip. It could be $5. Uh, unfortunately, I get caught a lot of times. All I have is a 20. I try to hand them a 20. <laughs> but the best thing to do, and, and listen to this very clearly, this is your first tip of the episode. Print your luggage tags before you go. Now, yes. if you book with Cruise and Review, we will print them for you and make sure you have them before you go. Um, get these little holders. You're seeing video of that right now, of these little holders. You fold the paper up. You stick it down in there. You attach it to your bag. And the reason I say do that is because it makes that process so much smoother. Because mm -hmm. there's going to be typically a lot of people, a lot of people moving everywhere. And you've got your paperwork and you got your passports and you've got mm -hmm. all these things. If you don't, the porter will have luggage tags. So if you forget mm -hmm. them, it's okay. You're not messed up. But then they've got to stop. They've got to fill out the luggage tag for your stateroom. Mm -hmm. Then they've got to attach it to your bag and staple it. And then and then drop your bags off. And yeah. if you've got, you know, your family, let's say six, mm -hmm. you got to do that for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and we've traveled with people before that will not do this. And it will... It, it's bad. Like, it, and a lot of times when you're you're in a group, it's like we've got our tags. You know, we're ready to go. We just hand them our bags, and we've stood there for like 15 minutes waiting, waiting on them yeah. to tag their bags. 
Um, and then they're like, well, they won't have tags, and they're looking for them, yeah. and they got to go ask Johnny down the way where the tags are. Yeah. So do that. Please do that. And if you book with us, we'll help you do that. And, mm-hmm. and if you're booking through another travel agent, um, make sure that they help you do that. Mm-hmm. Because it, you just simply hand them your bags, give them $5, you're done. Mm-hmm. Make sure you keep your passports with you. Yes. Um, all the cruise lines now almost use an app to check in. But make sure if, you, if they're using papers, uh, sale passes, mm-hmm. boarding passes, you've got that with you backpack uh if you want to go swimming and mm-hmm. that throw that in there any medicines you'll need because you may not get your bag you know for another four or five hours yeah um but they'll they'll load it up you won't see your bag again it'll be put outside of your stateroom mm-hmm. the staff in san juan did an excellent job of of doing that we handed it right to them they said go over here so we walk over and this is kind of the moment of truth because yeah. we've got a four thirty time and it's on your app you use the phone app through uh Royal Caribbean, it says very clearly your boarding time is 4.30, and it's 11.30. So I was like, all right, we're about to either get in a taxi or we're about to get on board uh, the Voyager of the Seas. Yeah. So we walk right up. Well, there are all these people. I don't know what they were doing. Yeah, they were just in groups. Like, there was there were these these groups of women. There were these It was like family. groups of old people. <laughs> If they weren't in line though. They weren't. They were not. They were in just that. kind of standing over to the side, digging through things. Yeah. I'm assuming they were looking for passports or yeah, I, or or they didn't know where their set cell pass was. Or I, we couldn't figure it out. But there was a. Yeah. We we walked right up to the guy. Yeah, we we walked this guy. He actually we stood there for a minute because it was just like it was like a big huddle. <laughs> a and he said, right, "Do you guys have all your stuff? This is another tip. Have your stuff out. Have your passport out. Mm-hmm. Have your app open. Um, that way, because." That will really help because what this guy basically says, do you, are you, do you have what you need? And yeah. we're like, yes. So we just walk up to this guy. He looks at our pass and he says, go ahead. Just go on through. It may or may not have ever looked at that time. There was not a bunch of people in line at the time. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't going to hurt anything to send us on through. He sent us through. You go to another person. They're going to check your boarding pass against your passport. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're using a birth certificate and a driver's license, they're going to refer- make sure the information matches. Um, and they do that two or three times before you actually ever get to your official check-in place. Then you go through security. Uh-huh. Um, and, and um, you know, at security, it's not quite like airport security. No. You know, you don't have to take your shoes off or anything like that. They do have a metal detector. Your bag will go through the metal detector. And then that, at that point, they also will check things if you're bringing, like, alcohol on board. Mm-hmm. If you're bringing a 12-pack of soda on board, they'll check all those things to make sure they follow the guidelines. Uh, my hair dryer set off the uh, set off the electrical yes. thing, so you know, just it's it's very mild security, no big deal. It didn't take too long. I didn't I didn't no, think it took that, too that's long. That's pretty easy. Don't bring a, an iron like that. Yeah. That's gonna you know trigger a security alert. And if you pack it in your your checked luggage, you'll you'll bags will get head. They call it uh, the naughty room downstairs, <laughs> and that's where they take all the stuff. And then they say, hey, I'm gonna take this. You'll get it back at the end of the cruise, but don't pack anything like that. That will delay your boarding process. Mm-hmm. But you can take. Um, you can take more things than you could through an airport. Lick, you know, certain liquids. Yes. Uh, you know, you're not bound to a lot of that. You're, yeah. you're uh, little things that might set off TSA. It's not quite that strict. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, if you're by, uh, you want to bring, I think Royal Caribbean's one bottle of wine per mm-hmm. um, per person. Now, um, if you're doing that, that's not a big deal, but make sure it's sealed. Mm-hmm. They may check that, but your, her curling iron did go off, or not your curling iron, your... It's a hairdryer. Yeah, but it doesn't look like a hairdryer. It looks like a Tesla cord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the, it's one know. of those Dyson, so it's Dyson hairdryer, so it's 100 feet long, and it, and it set it off, but we made it through, I, show, I had to show yeah. it to the little security guy, North yeah. Frog Way, Pie. Yeah. Um, and then we moved on. We were ready, you know, we were almost, almost ready to board Voyager of the Seas after that little... Yeah, and, and so... From there, it's easy because you, when you check in online now, you put your card information in, you upload a photo of yourself, uh, you upload your passport. So all they're doing is verifying it's you. And they may ask you a couple of health questions to ask us if we had any symptoms of anything, which that's yeah. actually back to normal. They always have done that yeah. since I started cruising. So that was back to normal. They asked Audrey if she was pregnant. Yeah, that was a new question for me. So you know, I said no. So not as <laughs> far as you know. Definitely, definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Um, and then they asked about uh, our vaccination status, even though it's not required. They did yeah. ask about and that. And how many boosters we'd had. Uh-huh. I, I, I couldn't remember if I'd had one or two boosters, but mm-hmm. I just said two. And I, they, I don't think that mattered. I think that was more for their records and research purposes, should mm-hmm. you have caught COVID on board. Um, and then they said, okay, have a good cruise. You don't get really your card 
through Royal. Some of them are different. You, you used to get your card right then. Uh -huh. Now they, you know, your your app or your code, or you can just give them your state. Remember, if you want to buy anything when you first get on board, that's how you use your drink package. So it's very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent us that direction. We we they've sent us somewhere else. We started walking, and the next thing you know, you see that great sign which says to the ship. Yep, it's got an arrow. And it's like this way. Oh, and that at that point you have made it. Your vacation is about to begin. It was so smooth, though. Audrey asked me at one point. She was like, and I was videoing, and uh, we were going up the escalator. She's like, are we getting on board? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're getting <laughs> yeah. on board. So we we uh, got on board the ship. Very seamless process. And, and again, um, I always say this. When you're boarding, enjoy that moment. I, mm. I say that's the best part of the whole trip. It's yet to be opened. Because um, as soon as you get on board, the clock starts ticking on it being over. As soon as yeah. it starts, it's ending, you know, and, and uh, yep. time flies. Uh, the best thing about that is that feeling of excitement when you get on board. And, you know, after COVID, we have cruised since COVID, but only once. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of our first normal cruise without having a COVID. You know, we got on board Granger of the Seas, you know, in April of 2022. And you really, it was like you didn't even believe you were there because we had to go through so much to get on board. This one was just a normal boarding day process. We just walked on board. You didn't have on a mask. And the staff was not wearing masks. And yeah. um, we got on board and, and you're there. Um, and that feeling of excitement is just unmatched. So, you know, next topic is what do you do first, right? You're, you're new. What do you do first? And everybody's got something different that yeah. they do first. But the, the first place I would start was if you've not booked something online, maybe you've decided you want to do the drink package. Maybe you've not booked specialty restaurants. Um, maybe you're, you want to get your Wi-Fi figured out. Mm -hmm. which Massages. If you're on Voyager of the Seas, I don't know. Uh, um, <laughs> and, then, and then probably the next priority because you're on a cruise is food. Um, it's Norris Frog's favorite. Yes. And, um, but my first thing I would do is if you didn't book anything online or you need to take care of anything like a reservation, mm -hmm. if you're on a bigger ship, you want to book shows, you want anything like that, mm -hmm. I would do that online before you go. But if you haven't, that would be the first thing I would do. Yeah, for sure. You know, they usually have people standing around ready to help you book those things so they're not hard to find. And something else I want to point out, you probably saw in several pictures and videos of me wearing a lanyard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for all the female people, uh, if you, you know, a lot of our shorts or whatever we have on don't have pockets and we don't carry wallets like the guys do. So when you do get your CPAS card, um, you, you can, they offer these lanyards that the CPAS card will go right in and then you're able to just wear it around your neck and you're never going to lose it. And so that's something you can buy. If you don't bring it with you, that's something you can buy when you get on board. They usually have little stands everywhere. And so that's something I highly recommend. You won't regret it. Yeah, and again, if you if you're on a ship where they give your your card is left at your stateroom door, you just give them your room number, and they all mm -hmm. charge it retroactively. So yeah, get all that stuff done. Um, and if you're uh, Royal Caribbean, uh, and I think Carnival has kept this too. The the e muster drill. Some yes. of the cruise lines have gone back to the traditional one. I can't for the life of me figure out why. Uh, but Royal Caribbean has kept it, and it was mm -hmm. so efficient. So yes. do that. You got to watch a couple of videos, and then it tells you to go. To, to your assigned assembly station, mm -hmm. pay attention to where that's at. That's a big safety mechanism. Hopefully nothing goes wrong, but go do that. And go do that quickly because the ship is waiting on you to do that. They can't set sail till you do that. So get that done. Go check in. They will get your stateroom number. They'll, they'll verify you've done your drill, and that's done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go gather up in this big thing. Now, again, there's a lot of cruise lines have gone back to traditional, but if you're sailing on Royal, Carnival has kept it as well. Go ahead and get that done. So get those to-do things so you can start vacation. And then... If you're hungry, I would go straight to lunch because yeah. the longer you get into the boarding day, the more crowded the buffet is going to be. Yes. Typically, you know, if you do get on board a little early before those designated boarding times, you can get up to the, on Royal Caribbean, it's called the Windjammer, um, you know, the buffet, where wherever that is on your ship and grab some lunch. We always like to start off with cheeseburgers. Uh, Two know. pieces of cheese. Yes. You know, French fries. They usually have a little bit of everything on the first day, so you'll definitely be able to find something you like, your kids like, if you've got kids. Um, you know, so definitely recommend find the buffet, grab some lunch, because then you'll be able to explore and won't be hungry. Absolutely. And then what's next? Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Now, your rooms likely won't be ready between one and two. We had a little bit of a neurovirus problem from a previous cruise, mm -hmm. so they were deep cleaning the rooms. Ours weren't ready till two. Really not hard. Your drink package, if you've got it, it's already good. Again, pump drink package. Um, you know, the, the bars are open. Mm -hmm. A lot of the activities are open. I think the, the flow rider on board Voyager of the Seas was open, mm -hmm. um, but you can do anything you want to do. You want to pack, uh, hey, get on board wearing your swim trunks. Uh, you can swim. The pools are open. Mm -hmm. If the water slides, if you've got those, those are open. 
Um, you know, we played mini golf. Yeah. Um, if your ship's got that, you can play mini golf. Get that first drink and make you a toast and we're on board. Uh, and then go, go ahead to make your phone calls and finish up any business you may have. Um, you know, if you want to, you're going to stay in touch during the cruise. That may be less important. But if you're like us, we we don't typically make a lot of phone calls. We will check emails, do some work stuff periodically through the cruise. But mm-hmm. um, we're not making a lot of phone calls typically. So um, say goodbye to everybody. Get that done. And uh, once your rooms are ready, um, you know, you're off and running. Yep, you're ready to start that vacation. You know, you um, once your rooms are ready, you can get in there and and. Quit carrying that heavy backpack around if you're you've been carrying a backpack all day and um get ready to set sail and and like Blake said make sure you do your muster drill on your phone and and it, you're ready for seven days of nothing but paradise and not having to pick up any towels or laundry you know you're 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 ready to go you've met your stateroom attendant if you're in your room probably by then and it's, yeah, they'll typically come see you mm-hmm. again that's changing too unfortunately they're going to one a day room uh service like they you know they. Have dropped a lot of that too, but they'll typically greet you there yeah. and tell you hello. We met Sonia; she was awesome. North yeah. Star, big fan, yeah, big fan of Sonia. They were buddies. He, <laughs> them two had a great time together. Once your room is ready, though, settle in. A lot we've had times when our luggage has beat us to the room. Yeah. Um, if it's there, go ahead and unpack, get that done. Take, mm-hmm. don't try to live out of a suitcase on a cruise. Your your luggage will fit underneath the bed, so get everything out, put it into drawers. You're like Audrey now; you're gonna fight <laughs> over the drawer space. I I get you know the shaft on that every time oh my goodness every time he tells me i bring way too much i always bring what i need everything we own it's like <laughs> when when rose is boarding the titanic and she's got picasso paintings and everything else that's audrey boarding voyager so you may not want to ask me for packing no tips. don't do not ask Blake. um unpack and then you may want to rest up get off your feet for a minute because you know at that point you're going to have set sail there's going to be sail away activities there's going to be pool parties mm-hmm. uh you may have dinner plans for that night everything's open the first night you know it may not mm-hmm. seem like it but a good night to eat in specialty restaurants is the first night they're typically yeah. people don't do that for some reason and they're they're way less crowded the service is a lot better yes. on the first night we started doing that the last couple of cruises and like like said the service is is a, they're excited to start a new cruise and meet new people and so it's it's a great way to kick off your vacation is go to the specialty restaurant on night one and uh, uh, there'll be a welcome aboard show. Uh, always good to go to that because a lot of times your cruise director will give you stuff, ins and outs about the ship mm-hmm. and everything that they're doing. Um, the shops, they will, a lot of that, the shops and the casinos will typically open about 60 minutes after uh, you get away from land when you get to international waters. Uh, a lot of times the, the shops have really good sales on the first mm-hmm. the first night, kind of a welcome aboard sale. Sometimes it's the leftovers from the previous cruise and the restocking. Yeah. Um, the casino will be open. A lot of times less crowded on the first night for, for one reason or another. And then make sure you, you enjoy your sail away. We always toast with champagne despite Royal's better efforts this go around. We'll tell you more about that in a later episode. But um, And then just relish being being on your vacation. Um, as land starts to disappear, um, the ship starts moving, the ship comes alive. It's like the ship comes alive. Um, just relish being there. Enjoy every bit of it because that first day at sea, once it starts and you get to day two and the next thing you know, say three, and I mean, you may be doing a four night cruise, mm-hmm. you know, but if you're doing a seven night cruise, it's day four, day five, day six, day seven, and you're gone, it's over. And they still fly you've back. planned this for so long. You know, we've done a nine night cruise. It seemed just as short as the four day cruise we did. I don't know how that's possible, but um, just, just relish being, being at sea. So it was a good boarding day on board Voyager of the Seas. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a, um, uneventful boarding day everything went well everything went smooth we were back on board our room was good our stateroom attendant was nice we got food Mm -hmm. um we got some blogging posting done we got all of our little things we needed to do our e-muster makes boarding days so much less eventful and then we had dinner at giovanni's table on night one um wonderful restaurant if you you're on a board a royal caribbean ship hit giovanni's if you're Mm -hmm. looking for a steak it may be tricky chops is a good steakhouse if you want a good steak get the beef tenderloin at giovanni's table just trust me um, on that. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we're rushing through. We're, we're running ahead of schedule. Imagine us being long-winded. But let's talk about our cruise of the week. So each week we're going to offer you a cruise of the week. It's in our uh, weekly recap email mm-hmm. if you get that. But we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. But our cruise of the week this week was an eight-night Pacific coastal cruise uh, on board Radiance of the Seas. If you see me looking over to the side here, the laptop is over here. And so that's kind of our guide. And it's everything else you can tell. It's really doing a good job keeping me on time. Um, it, it actually only has one sailing. That's September 29th, 2023. Um, it was very affordable when we looked. Mm-hmm. As of March 6th, that was $521 per person interior rooms, under $1,000 balcony rooms. Uh, you just don't get that very much yeah. anymore. And it is a repositioning. So it starts in Vancouver 
and it ends in San Diego, nice. which is Spanish for. No, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. PG show, PG show. Keep it clean, North Frog. The producer's uh, gonna get you. Yeah, he's gonna get me. Um, it goes to Victoria, British Columbia. Very nice place. Great self-guided culinary walking tour, which is our favorite. Um, Seattle, Washington. Great place. Uh, Halibut. Yes. Um, Astoria, Oregon. A day at sea. Then it goes to Monterey, California. That's a tender stop. Uh, Los Angeles, California. Uh, and then Ensenada, Mexico, and then it finishes in San Diego. Um, wonderful place, San Diego. Unbelievable place. Yeah. Uh, love it there. So that's a good cruise, good affordable cruise, a little different cruise. Um, you're going to have to fly to Vancouver, and you're going to fly home from San Diego. It does add to that price a little bit, which is why it's so affordable, but very unique. If you have never been to the West Coast, it's a beautiful area. It's different mm -hmm. than anything you've ever seen. And that's a good way to see it. We've we've been to yeah. a lot of these places. Um, you really but, hit a little bit all the way yeah, down. Yeah, we've been to Monterey. We've been mm -hmm. to L.A. We've been to San Diego. We've been to Seattle. We've been to Victoria. Never been to Vancouver. And Vancouver's cool, uh, from what I hear. So, uh, very cool cruise. If you would like to book that, you can contact us uh, at uh, cruiseinreview.com. Uh, and then you can uh, also call us, 870-273-5004, or email us at info mm -hmm. at cruiseinreview.com. We'd be happy to book that for you. And if you... Uh, there is a deal right now that we are offering. It's actually a giveaway. Yeah. There is no purchase necessary to enter. There uh, would be a purchase necessary on the back end if you would like to collect your prize, but uh, no purchase necessary to enter. Um, what we will do for you is if you will subscribe to the blog, that can be on whatever device you're using. It could be on Apple, Amazon, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. That'd be the easiest way to do it. Uh, and then subscribe to our podcast. Go to our homepage, cruiserreview.com. Just type your email into that box about midway down the page. Um, and if you'll do that, Subscribe to both those. You are entered to win uh, this deal that we've got for you. So what it would be, you book a cruise through Cruise and Review. Let's mm -hmm. say that one right there. Um, we get commission off of that. It doesn't cost you anymore to book that cruise. If you mm -hmm. book online without us or if you book with us, your price is going to be the same. But we get commission back from the cruise line off of your cruise. Mm -hmm. What we will do is we will give you our portion of the commission back to you um, if you book with us. Depending on the cruise you book, it could be anywhere from 100 to $500 or $600, depending on the type of cruise that you book. So if you book a four-night cruise, it's probably going to be about 100 bucks. If you book a six-night cruise, seven-night cruise, uh, balcony room, could be three or 400 bucks. We'll give you our portion of that uh, when you do that, if you subscribe uh, and uh, to both our podcast and our blog in some capacity. And then we're going to do this for the next month. And then after on our fourth episode, which will be in four weeks, we will draw somebody out and they will have that deal where they can book that cruise. So make sure that you do that. And then we'll draw from that group randomly for different things, gift cards, stuff like that. And that'll be yeah. that'll be a cash prize. It's not going to be some sort of onboard credit. We will just simply give you uh, that back as a uh, probably a gift card of some kind that you can use for mm -hmm. your gas to get to the port or your luggage fees or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but anyway, so that's a deal we've got for you. Again, no purchase necessary to enter. Um, and you must subscribe to our podcast and our blog, and we will give you our portion of the commission back, which is about 50% of the commission. Our good friends over at Cruise Brothers take the other 50% because they're the reason we get to do what we do. So, um, All right, that has been our first episode. So next week, we're going to get more and more into the cruise. We're going to talk about St. Thomas Ooh, next week. I'm excited about that. Yeah, and we've Thomas got so cool. much good video and photos we went to Secret Sands Beach. Mm -hmm. You found that one. Yes. Yeah. Our original short excursion got canceled, and we so we kind of had to plan, take Plan B there, and we found that one where the drinks were included, and the beach was beautiful, and we had a great time. So. Oh, it was so good. We had a great time. So that is our topic next week: video, photos, everything, some tips on St. Thomas, not just Secret Sands, but places we've been and things we've mm -hmm. done before. Uh, so tune in on that one. That will be March. 20th, uh, Monday, March 20th is when that one will drop. Sometimes I'll drop Sunday nights if you want to check for that. Uh, make sure you follow us on social at Cruise and Review on all of our social yeah. mediums. Audrey runs our TikTok. There's all kinds of fun stuff um, on there. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button while you're watching us on YouTube. Go to our website, cruiseandreview.com, and subscribe to that blog. There's all kinds of giveaways and deals, and then you can get emails from us. Um, when we travel, you can actually get a postcard from us while yeah. we're traveling. We did that last time. Everybody seemed to really enjoy that. And if you would like to book a trip, we book travel as well. Uh, again, cruiserreview.com. Uh, you can fill out a little form there under our book travel section, mm -hmm. and we'd be happy to book that trip, full service trip um, for you. We will make sure that uh, you know everything there is to know. We'll get you prepared. We'll print your luggage tags. We will do all that because we are very passionate about that. Not just cruises, any kind of travel. 
yeah, hotels, Branson stays, yeah, not just cruises. So please, please remember that when you're thinking about wanting to go somewhere. We can help you book whatever it is. Yep. So, hey, and don't forget to follow Norse Frog. Yeah. Uh, Norse Frog on Instagram and on Twitter. It's no, at Norris Frog. And because all along in his little travels, his little life. So he had a good time on the vacation. So we'll we'll share a little bit more of that as we go along, I'm sure. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty cool dude. So you can follow <laughs> along with him uh, as well. So this has been the first episode of the Cruise in Review podcast. Thank you so much for joining us next week. We'll talk about St. Thomas. That will come out Monday. March 20th. I'm Blake. And I'm Audrey. That's Norris Frog. We're the Cruise and Review team. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.